Hi there! In this series of videos, I'm going to explain all about everything you need to know for CIE GCSE physics, uh, IGCSE physics, about electromagnetism. This is quite a long topic, so this will be spread over a couple of videos, um, but do try and watch the whole thing, and that should give you all the knowledge that you need. So we're going to start off with magnets. You've been doing magnets since year 8, so you should have a rough idea of how they work. Um, any magnet as you should remember, has a North Pole and a South Pole, and we know that North Pole and South Poles attract each other while same poles repel. Now we're going to go a little bit deeper and we're going to think about how they really work. So magnetism relies on the idea of a magnetic field. If you remember, a field is a region of space where something experiences a force. Um, so in a uh, magnetic field, ferrous materials experience magnetic force. Um, a ferrous material is anything that can experience a magnetic field, um, and there are three ferrous materials. They are iron, nickel, and cobalt. Nothing else can be magnetic, um, so everything else is called non-ferrous, so it can't experience a magnetic field. Um, and a magnetic field, when you draw it, it shows you where a free north pole will travel. Um, as we'll see later, it's not possible to get a free north pole by itself, but if you theoretically could, then what we can say is when we draw a field line, that's the path that a uh, north pole would go. And like I said earlier, opposite poles attract, light poles repel. You need to be very careful. Um, when we're dealing with magnets, we magnets have north and south poles. When we're dealing with electric fields, we have positive and negative charges. You never want to talk about the uh, positive end of a magnet, because that's nonsense. Okay, so how do we actually make a magnet? I want you to imagine here that I have a ferrous material. Inside a ferrous material, they all have thousands and thousands of domains. And you can think of a domain as kind of like a mini magnet with a north pole and a south pole. And in this case, I'm just showing the north pole as an arrow. Now, non-ferrous materials don't have these domains. The, these arrows don't exist in them, but ferrous materials do. Um, and if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because a, a lump of iron isn't a magnet, but it is attracted to a magnet. So how does that work? Well, in a, just a lump of iron that isn't a magnet, all of the domains are like I've drawn here. They're all random. Um, so some of them point one way, others point the other way, and there's no overall direction. In a permanent magnet, however, all of those domains are aligned. So they are all in the same direction. Um, and you can see, therefore, that all these north and south poles together, they build up. And what they mean, what that means is you get a clear North Pole and a clear South Pole. So why is it then that a lump of ferrous material will still stick to a magnet? Well, that all comes down to this idea of induced magnetism. So here is my piece of ferrous material, just like a lump of iron, or your fridge door. Most fridges are made of iron or steel, um, and as you know, they're not magnetic by themselves. But if I bring a permanent magnet near it, then what happens is this North Pole over here attracts the South Poles on all of these domains. So what I end up with is a load of North Poles pointing that way. Now those North Poles are going to attract all of the domains of the uh, next kind of row of domains and line them up as well. So what you end up with is they start to look identical. This one here becomes an induced magnet. So what happens if I remove my permanent magnet? Well now there's nothing forcing those domains to line up anymore, so they kind of spring back and they stop being magnetic. So that kind of explains why when you go to your fridge to put a fridge magnet on it, as you bring the magnet closer to the fridge, what happens is the domains in the door all line up and attract each other, and they stick. When you pull the magnet away, those domains unfreeze and go back to being random again, and now the door isn't magnetic anymore. So one of the experiments we'll do in class is a really nice, simple, but quite cool one. And you're going to get a paper clip like this. So you're going to get a chain of paper clips. Here are my paper clips. 
And you can imagine the paper clips are made of steel, so they're ferrous, but they're not magnets. So they have domains, but the domains are all random. If I bring a permanent magnet near to that, well, what will happen is, in this first one here, all of the domains line up, so it ends up with a clear north and south pole. If that's the next to another paper clip, well, that's going to induce magnetism in that one too. So I get this chain of magnetism where all the paper clips become induced magnets. The really cool thing, though, is if I then remove my permanent magnet, the paper clips will stay magnetic because this one here is causing induced magnetism in the one next to it, and this one causes induced magnetism in that one. So you end up with kind of this chain. And what you can do is really cool, is if I take one of my paper clips away, well now it's free of the influence of all of the others, so it springs back to not being a magnet anymore. Um, and we'll do a little kind of playing around with putting paper clips together, taking them apart, and seeing how that can happen. So you might be wondering, um, how is it then that I can actually make a permanent magnet? Um, so there's a couple of ways. Um, one is you take your blump of metal that you want to turn into a, a magnet, and you stroke it with another magnet. And what that will do is, over time, it will force the domains to line up. Um, the other thing you can do is you can get a coil of wire, and you can put a big current through it. When you do that, we're going to see in the next couple of lessons, that will cause it to become a magnet, and if you can make it strong enough, um, those domains will lock in place. To destroy a magnet, what you have to do is unalign those domains again so they become random. So there's a couple of ways you can do it. Um, one is by heating it. If you think about heating it, that will make the particles vibrate more and those domains can come free. Um, if you hammer it, you'll shake it and the domains will unalign. Um, another thing you can do is you get a coil of wire, but this time you put an alternating current into it. Now, when you put an alternating current into it, as we're going to see later, that will cause this to become north-south, north-south, north-south. And as you pull it out of there, what you will find is it will have bands that are north and bands that are south. Um, and because they're all random, eventually it'll just act like it has no magnetism at all.